One of the things that I mentioned in class was that sometimes these dew temperature and bubble temperature calculations can require an iterative solution. So what I've got here is an example of an iterative solution using Goal Seek in Excel. There's also a version of this that you can use on Google Sheets. So you can um, add an additional add-in called a solver add-in. So if you Google around a little bit for that um, Google Sheets solver add-in, you can find essentially the same capability in Google Sheets for free. But I believe this functionality is available even in the free version of Excel, and I'm used to using Excel, so I'm gonna show you it with this. So uh, what I've got here is from Appendix H, I've taken some standard Antoine equation coefficients. So this is the standard Antoine equation that you'll find in Appendix H, where P star is the vapor pressure in millimeters mercury, we input a temperature in Kelvin, and we have to use some constants A, B, and C. And I've just arbitrarily chosen acetone and water as component one and component two. Um, and I've listed their A, B, and C coefficients here, which are just out of the um, Appendix H from your book, which is also posted on TED. You can find it there. And so I'm going to demonstrate Goal Seek with two of these calculations. Um, keep in mind that it is possible to uh, explicitly solve for a temperature from the Antoine equation, uh, which is perfectly fine. If you'd like to do something like that, you can. It just ends up making the equation look like a mess. Um, naturally, I won't ask you to do an iterative solution on an exam, but this will help speed it up in terms of your homework if you've got a tool like this available. So I'll start with the dew temperature calculation up here on the top. Um, and I've reproduced the same equation here that we uh, derived in class for a dew temperature calculation. And keep in mind for dew temperature, that means that somebody has told us what the total pressure is uh, and what the vapor mole fraction is. And so our goal is to figure out what the dew temperature is and the liquid mole fraction, X1. So the solution procedure is gonna look like what I've shown over here. Um, step one will be to just guess a temperature. We don't know what that temperature is yet. We'll try to take a good guess, uh, but it doesn't really matter at this point. The next thing we'll do is calculate the vapor pressures using our Antoine equation. Um, and finally, we're gonna iterate on temperature until our left-hand side of the equation, being these fractions, is equal to one. Um, and that's the step where goal seek is gonna help us out quite a bit. Um, and then after this one, I'll demonstrate bubble temperature too. So I'm gonna create a couple of cells here. So the first is T guess. Um, the second one is P1 star and P2 star, which we'll calculate based on our Antoine equation coefficients. And then we'll calculate uh, the left-hand side of the equation that I've given up here. So we need to pick any old temperature that we want. Um, it's usually a good idea to pick it somewhere in between the boiling points of these two components. So I know water is 373 Kelvin, so I'm just going to pick somewhere around 350 Kelvin. Um, so P1 star, we just calculate using uh, the Antoine coefficients that we've got over here. So A minus B divided by the quantity of C plus our temperature in Kelvin. That's um, P1 star, and then P2 star is pretty much the same thing, except now it's for water. So A minus the B coefficient of water divided by C plus our temperature in Kelvin. And now we can calculate the left-hand side of our equation based on the guess that we just made. So the left-hand side is equal to the mole fraction of one, which is 0 0.5 times the total pressure is 700 divided by P1 star, which is this one, plus Y2 is also 0 0.5, because that's presumably what somebody told us, times the total pressure divided by the vapor pressure of component two. So our guess of 350 gave us a left-hand side of 1.36, but we know this equation needs a left-hand side of equal to 0.1. So this is where we're gonna use goal seek to quickly iterate on T guess in order to get the left-hand side is equal to one. Um, you can do it by hand a little bit. If 350 is, gives you 1.36, um, 360 gets a little bit closer, maybe 355 is pretty darn close, 354. Um, gets a little further away. So it's probably gonna end up being somewhere around 356, but we can get it smack on one um, by using goal seek. So I'm gonna put just 350 back in there um, for an arbitrary guess. To use goal seek in Excel, we go to data and then what if analysis, 
and there's an option called Goal Seek. So Goal Seek that I've brought up over here is a pretty simple interface that says, you're gonna set a cell, give it a target cell, to some value by changing some other cell. So the set cell is that we want to set this left-hand side cell equal to a value of one by varying the temperature. Right, so set left-hand side equal to one by varying our temperature guess. If we click OK, uh, it has solved this for 358. We can add a few more digits of precision if we look up here at the actual answer, it's 358.035. Um, but at any rate, this is now our dew temperature. So that's 358. And if we wanna calculate the mole fraction in the liquid phase, we can calculate that using our Antoine coefficient or our Antoine equation that's already given in this equation, which is 0 0.5 times the total pressure of 700 divided by the vapor pressure of component one. So we see that we have a mole fraction of 0 0.189 in the liquid phase. So that's an example of goal seek for a dew temperature calculation. Excuse me, it looks the same on a bubble point calculation, except uh, the equation looks a little bit different. So now on bubble temperature, keep in mind we know the total pressure. Somebody is going to tell us what the liquid phase mole fraction is, and we're trying to calculate the bubble temperature and the mole fraction in the liquid phase. The solution procedure looks very similar. We're gonna guess a uh, temperature, grab our vapor pressures from the Antoine equation, and then we'll iterate until this left-hand side is equal to one. Um, and that equation will look a little bit different from what we saw before. So we still have T guess, um, and I'm just gonna use the same guess that we had before of about 350. Um, we still calculate P1 star and P2 star for that guess in the same way that we had before. So acetone, my, oh, that's an equals, not a minus, minus B divided by the quantity of C plus temperature in Kelvin. Um, and then same thing for P2 star, A minus B divided by the quantity of C plus temperature in Kelvin. And now we calculate our left-hand side. The difference here is that now our left-hand side is the left-hand side of this equation for a bubble temperature calculation. So our X1 is 0 0.5 times P1 star divided by our total pressure, which is also 700, plus X2 times P2 star divided by 700. And ideally, this should be equal to one. So we're gonna go back up to goal seek and say data, what if, goal seek. And now we want to set this cell that represents the left-hand side of our equation uh, equal to a value of one by varying our guess temperature. So we'll hit okay and let Excel go do its work. It converged pretty well. Three zeros is pretty darn close to just one. Um, so therefore our bubble pressure, or sorry, our bubble temperature is 342.7 and we can get our Y1 using Routes law from either one of these um, terms here. Well, we would get Y2 using the second term, but Y1 comes from the first term, which is 0 0.5 times the vapor pressure of component one divided by the total pressure, which is 700. So here our mole fraction is 0 0.837. So this is an example of how you can do uh, dew temperature and bubble temperature calculations iteratively using Excel. And similarly, if you have Google Sheets, if you Google around for the add-in called the Solver add-in for Google Sheets, you can do it on there too. And naturally, you can use other programs like uh, MATLAB or Mathematica or something like that. Um, or if you really don't want to iterate, you can actually solve the Antoine equation explicitly for temperature and then try to solve these equations explicitly for temperature, um, but it'll be an ugly looking equation. But you should get exactly the same result. Thank you very much, all. Hope it was helpful.